Hello, we are the Voice Authentication Group. We've created a Java application that will allow you to save your passwords and use your voice as a master password to unlock your password vault. I'm Ken Stefan. I'm Adam Early. And I'm Alan Murphy. We're going to give you a walkthrough today of how we came up with the idea, how we've managed our code, and the final product code itself. So, to start off, we were talking about the project a lot. We came up with a lot of ideas that all ended up being uh, pretty much failures, but just on about the 50th try, decided voice authentication sounded like a good idea, sounded like something appropriately difficult, but also attainable within the about month that we had to do it, and started working on it. So now I'm going to walk you through our project management and source code control. So for project management, we've elected to use Basecamp, seen here, as you can see, not much to do left. We're almost done. In fact, we'll check that one off right now. That's all done. So this is a great system we're using here. Uh, luckily, they did have a trial period that was long enough we didn't have to pay for it. Got the calendar here where we were able to manage all of our to-dos and see meeting schedules and such. Not much on there to see now since it's pretty much all done with now that we're recording this video here at the end. And also in the project folder, we were able to share files and be able to view our progress in real time from home without really having to call or sync up our schedules. For source code control, we used GitHub. I went ahead and paid the $7 to make sure it was private and nobody would be messing with it. So this is the local GitHub program. We were able to use it to synchronize all of our changes and see the various improvements we'd made over time. We also went ahead and used Dropbox for sharing a lot of things for the class, including our peer evaluation forms and our PowerPoint project that we had to present on Linux. And we have some code in here as well, including the compiled jar files, which GitHub doesn't really handle. So that's how we went about actually doing the project here. So let's look at some code. So we use NetBeans and Eclipse, Eclipse primarily for the GUI stuff, which Owen will touch on in his section here. As for voice functions, that was the section that I handled, along with the encryption and decryption of audio samples, which actually extended from Adam's code. So this is the voice functions code. And to make this work, we found something called vtext. It is made by another company. It's called uh, Basic Signal Processing. They provided this code for anyone to use, however, they provided no documentation for it, Javadoc or otherwise. So in order to figure out how to do this seemingly simple code here at the end, it involved many hours of trial and error and banging heads against walls. So this final code has just two main methods, recording a new user. This is when you want to enroll a new user in the voice authenticated password vault. This is going to create a new audio file and then run through a background noise filter also provided by vtext. And once that sample has been filtered, it's going to run through and encrypt it and delete the original. Then here we have the compare sample method. This is going to record from the user the challenge phrase and attempt to match it up with the original. In order to do that, it's going to decrypt the original, filter the background noise from the new file, and return a boolean true or false depending on whether or not that code matched. In order to facilitate the encryption and decryption we had to modify this encrypt decrypt method that Adam created to have special methods related to audio. Most of those are here in the decrypt or new method here. Here's the encryption for audio method and the decryption for audio method. And with these working together, we're able to capture a voice sample, encrypt it for security, and then decrypt it to run a challenge response. So now here is Adam to talk to you about the rest of the encryption and decryption information. So since this project was essentially a password manager, of course encryption was very important because you don't want anyone to see your passwords. So this is the encrypt or decrypt method. Uh, it uses a predefined string for encryption. You can't see that 
when the code is packaged up as a jar, so you don't have to worry about anyone getting your password. Uh, it uses DES encryption, and it takes your password, turns it into a string of bytes, and mixes that up with your password file. So your password file, when encrypted, basically looks like a bunch of jargon. And we also have cleanup methods. So whenever a new voice sample or a new password list is saved, um, it will immediately encrypt it and delete, delete the unencrypted file before the program even stops running. So if the program is ended abruptly, even with Task Manager, these files will still be deleted. Here are some of the uh, cleanup methods that are called immediately after a new uh, audio sample is taken or a new password file is changed. And that's about it for the encrypt or decrypt. So here's Owen to uh, talk about the GUI that he made. Hello. I'm going to talk to you about the GUI. Um, essentially, I well, I made it in uh, Eclipse. I tend to be more comfortable. I've used Eclipse for the window builder before. Um, so I generated it in a, the base in Eclipse and then continued modifying it once we got into actually merging everything together. I just continued using NetBeans to modify it. Um, as you can see here, you know, the GUI contains, you know, the JFrame and then layered layered panes, um, as you see here, up here, um, and then all the different uh, components that are used throughout the GUI. Um, it contains numerous buttons as far as, you know, a save button, an exit button, all the general things that you would see on any other program. Um, to get this to work, for what we needed, we need uh, needed to insert a file into a J table, um, which we do through the, the code seen here. Um, this is code that I found the base for um, through much research um, online and compiled, you know, changed it and worked on it to suit our needs. Um, I did get stuck at one point uh, create uh, creating the two dimensional vector required for the data. Uh, so after probably about 24 hours of working on this code and uh, not being able to find a, a solution for our problem, I posted on Stack Overflow um, and went out to my peers in the community to see if anyone else could give me a hand. Um, I was graced with a, an awesome response uh, to help solve my problem and a very good explanation of why th that worked. Um, I was very thankful for that. Um, that was created in this vector here, um, creating it inside of the while loop instead of outside the while loop. Um, that way it would create a new instance every time that it got to the end of a line. Um, th throughout the speech GUI, you know, there's two panes, so it's split in the two panes here. Here's the second pane um, to add a new user. Um, it goes through and it runs through a lot of, you know, the same things on the first pane, but contains most most of the same buttons but it forces you uh, to record a file before it actually lets you add data that way, that way there's no possible way that you can have a, that way you always have access you always have the recording to be able to access your files later um, so uh, this project you know it it helped me learn a lot about GUIs which we hadn't covered in class um, and I was very grateful for that. I, I think they're actually really interesting now. Um, and I was really thrilled to learn all about that. Um, so that's what we have. Uh, I think that the project came out really well um, and I was thrilled to get this learning experience. Alright, so now we're going to quickly run through exactly how the program works and show you the encrypted and decrypted files being created and deleted as the program runs. So, we're going to execute the program and go ahead and enroll a new user and record a password sample to be the initial password. 
This is my voice password. As you can see, the video file or audio file quickly changed from being just called Ken to being called Ken filtered and then Ken filtered E, the E standing for encrypted. This audio file is now completely encrypted with the DES algorithm and if we double click it, Media Player just sees it as corrupt. Now if we fire it up in VLC, we can force it to play, but it sounds absolutely horrible and I won't do that to your eardrums. So now back to the program, we can go ahead and add our website data. Let's say a google.com account with username and password. We're going to click save. And here you'll see the Ken E file. That is my password database. However, it is, as you can see here, encrypted. So now if we close the program, the only two files that remain in the directory are the encrypted audio file and encrypted text file of the password database. So now we're going to launch the program up again. And go ahead and log in as me. This is my voice password. As you can see, the password was a match and the database has been unlocked. If we look in the folder here, it had briefly created a WAV file that was the comparison text sample that I just spoke, but it deleted it immediately so that no one could copy that file away and then use it later to break in. Here you see this decrypted file has been created. This is the actual text file that's being displayed within the program right now. And if we go ahead and exit the program, you'll see the decrypted file deleted. And there we are. We're back to just having the encrypted text and encrypted audio files remaining. Before we conclude this video, we just wanted to go over a few possible ideas for a version 2.0 of our product. This graphic that you see here was our original design for how we wanted our code segments to interact. This is the original plan for the GUI created by Owen, voice comparison created by Ken, and encryption and decryption functions created by Adam. Now we feel that our final code does pretty accurately match with this original plan, and we're all very happy with what we've been able to accomplish in the time we had. That said, we do have a few ideas we would like to implement in the future, and since we have all come to really like this project, hopefully we'll be able to do so. So one idea we had was that we need to be able to have a method for one of our customers to recover their password if for some reason they get sick and lose their voice, or if they've just forgotten their password. So we would want to create a secure secondary method, perhaps using a fingerprint sensor, that you could log into your password vault and then reset your audio password. We would also like it so that you could re-record your audio password after logging in correctly with your voice. As of now, once you've recorded your initial sample in the program, that sample is permanent unless you enroll as a new user. We also had another idea about creating secondary voice samples or a more in-depth voice sample where you could provide a long, possibly 30 seconds to a minute sample, and that way your voice can be matched without having to read the same password every time. So hopefully we'll have a chance to go about some of these things in the future and further enhance the awesomeness of this project. So that concludes our brief code overview. Thank you very much for watching, and if you would like to give the program a try, we have it on display here today. And just so you can see it, here it is, the Password Vault program by Adam, Owen, and Ken Stefan. Thank you very much for watching.